Good morning, teens. Welcome to Sunday School. Let's get started with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we just come to you this morning. We just thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We just thank you for our country today, Lord. We just pray, continue to pray for our country, pray for our president during this time. Uh, be with Congress, Senate, and all those that are making decisions, state and local government. We love you, Lord. We thank you for our country. We do pray today that you just be with me as I teach your word. I just thank you as we can, uh, that we are able to study the book of James. Pray that you continue to help us as we look at James today. And then, Lord, I pray as we start to um, learn that we would continue to grow and that you would strengthen our faith in you. We love you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. This morning we'll be talking about faith loves, faith loves. Last week we talked about faith loves part one. Uh, we're talking about part two today. And our scripture today is found in James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. And uh, we'll turn to some other scripture, but that'll be our main text. As we talk about faith loves, um, we'll get started this morning by talking about as humans, we don't naturally like the idea that we have nothing to offer God. Uh, but true reality is we have nothing to offer God but ourselves. Uh, many times we take credit for our talents or our strengths. Uh, many times we want to take credit for our abilities in music or sports. Uh, maybe even our, our mind and our wisdom. We want to take credit for those things. Uh, maybe it's our strength. But again, all these things come from God. And so we need to remember that we don't have anything to offer God but ourselves, a vessel. And if we will offer ourselves to God, God will bless us in a mighty way. And so as we get started this morning, uh, we need to remember that God loves us and we cannot do anything to cause God to love us more or less. Because again, God loves us with the ultimate love, unconditional love. And uh, Ephesians 2.8.9 tells us in Ephesians 2.8.9, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Again, salvation is a gift from God. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not from us. It's not what we do. It's what God has already done. Jesus finished work on the cross. And so today as we talk about faith, we are going to talk about works, but works have nothing to do with salvation. So I don't want us to get that confused. Our works does not obtain uh, love from God, more love or less love. Our works does not save us. Only Christ and our, our saving faith in Christ can save us. Our works, uh, Ephesians 2.8.9, clearly state that our, our uh, salvation is through faith in Christ, and it's not on works. So I wanted to make sure uh, I mentioned that up front. And uh, Scripture teaches that we're justified by grace through faith. We cannot do enough to keep um, to keep our salvation because again salvation is a gift from God God gave it God's not going to take it he tells us that that uh, we are in the palm of his hand and so our salvation is secure we're thankful for that the truth and the promises of that uh, as a Christian I can I can have assurance that my Heavenly Father is never going to leave me he's never going to forsake me and uh, in Ephesians 2 8 9 again um, the Bible makes that clear and so Jesus stated that our righteousness would uh, would have to surpass that of the scribes and the Pharisees who were known for, for taking the law to an extreme measure. And Paul wrote an entire letter to the church of Galatia correcting their false belief that their sanctification required keeping the law. We cannot keep the law. And praise the Lord, we don't have to keep the law because of grace. And so God loves us. John 3.16 he loves us so much that He sent His Son to die for our sins. And so I'm so thankful for that. So why does James state uh, in, in James that his that faith without works is dead? We're going to talk about that. Uh, James is talking about justification not as what we gain from good works or not that our good works help us for salvation, but rather as what we reveal through our good works, what our good works can accomplish with God's help. We cannot come to God without faith. And faith will reveal itself through our actions. Uh, Hebrews 11.6 talks about that. Both, truth covers, uh, both truths cover how we become justified and how we know we have been justified. James stresses 
three separate times in the in the passage we're going to read that faith cannot exist without works. Faith and action are so inter intertwined that we will uh, that we can tell the state of our faith by the state of our actions. And so we need to remember uh, our actions, our works. Uh, they do say a lot about us, but our works do not save us. Remember that. Works will not save us. We do not have a work salvation. We have a faith salvation in Jesus Christ, a trust salvation, a believe salvation. And so I thank the Lord that we can be saved through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so James asserts that faith without works is dead. In the same way that human life is, uh, is the marriage of an invisible uh, our spirit and a visible physical body. Our spiritual life is the combination of invisible faith and visible action. Faith cannot exist without action. James, if you will look at our, our main scripture today, James chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, the Bible says, what doth, it, what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needed, needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. And so here in James again, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. And so James lets us know uh, that we, do, we, need, we need faith, no doubt, for salvation, but then we need works. Well, what are our works for? Our works are what God wants us to do things, and the things He wants us to do, it's not for salvation. It's not so that God loves us. Matter, many times our works actually help ourselves. And so God wants us to put actions to our faith. And James is talking about that here. Let, let our faith be worked out through our actions. Uh, you know, you've, many times you've heard the saying, our talk talks and our walk walks, but many times our walk uh, talks louder than our talk talks. And so we need to live daily a life that shows the love of Jesus Christ and that shows that we have sincere love for our Heavenly Father. And so are we showing Christian love? Teenagers, are we showing that love to our parents? Uh, many times we show it to them when we get what we want, but are we showing love to our parents? Teenagers, are we showing love? Um, and, and I'm not talking about an affection type love. I'm talking about a godly love. Are we showing love and respect and honor to, the, to those who have authority over us? Uh, are we showing it to our grandparents? Are we showing it to our pastors, to our teachers, uh, to our neighbors? And so, uh, faith shows compassion despite the cost. Uh, James chapter 14 through 17, we just read that. Um, and God gives us practical application of this truth. Faith evidences itself first and foremost by love. If you want to live out genuine faith, then we need to show compassion to our neighbors in need. There are roadblocks to compassion. And of course, in James, it's interesting to note that he returns to the contrast of the rich and the poor. Uh, wealth, while it can be more difficult for a wealthy person to show compassion, uh, even though many times there are a lot of wealthy people, praise the Lord, that God touches their heart and they are very giving and they show the love of Christ. They're very compassionate. They're very helpful to help others. But many times, some wealthy people struggle, as well as others, with not always having compassion for others. The more ability we have to control our surroundings many times causes us causes us to expose ourselves to unpleasant things. And so many times if we can control things and we get things exactly like we want, sometimes we expose ourselves to more problems, more headaches as opposed to relying on God. And if our Needs and our wants are met through material means. We tend sometimes to forget the suffering and the hurt and the heartache of others. Praise the Lord for people that God has blessed with lots of finances and they share that with others. 
they have a giving heart they have a tender compassionate heart for others um, and whether you're rich whether you're poor whether you're middle class God wants us to show love and compassion to others James chapter 6 verse 19 the Bible tells us in James chapter 6 verse 19 lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth excuse me where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal and it goes on in verse 20 it says but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust nor corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal for where your heart is there or excuse me for where your treasure is there will your heart be also let me read 21 again for where your treasure is there will your heart be also teenager where is your treasure is your is your treasure on looks is it on strength is it on musical ability is it on sports is it on your brain is it on your friends where is your treasure because where your heart is that's where your treasure is going to be God's looking for teenagers he's looking for young men he's looking for young women he's looking for adults young and middle-aged like myself that will just give our vessels to God and say Lord here am I teenager would you today say Lord here am I take my faith and use it help me to have loving compassionate faith teenager if you will if you will today commit to God to use you in the way that he sees fit God can do great things with you remember little is much when God is in it great little song that uh, my kids love I, I love singing it as well but little is much when God is in it teenager it's not the greatness of us we have nothing to offer God but ourselves and you know what God doesn't want anything from us except ourselves we give ourselves to God and say, God, I'm taking my hands off. Then God will do the rest. And God will bless us many times over. Because again, God can do great things with little. Many times in life, it's the humble that God used. It's the meek that God uses. And the reason for that is many times we get prideful. Uh, whether it's our mind, whether it's our, our abilities, our strengths, we get prideful in that. And God wants us to be humble and just say hear my Lord so teenager I encourage you today give give yourself to the Lord and as we talk about um, compassion uh, in Jesus teachings he mentioned several drawbacks of material wealth one uh, riches are are lost easy as Matthew 6 uh, 19 there riches are deceitful and can choke out the Word of God in Matthew 13 22 and Luke 8 14 riches can make it difficult for wealthy to see their need and enter into the kingdom and course we're finding that in Matthew 19 Mark chapter 10 and also in Luke chapter 18 and so uh, most of us don't think of ourselves wealthy compared to others however we can always think of this family or that person that uh, that is in much more need than us you know many times if we lift up our eyes and we look we'll see those that are hurting worse to us we'll see those that are poorer than us those that are hungrier than us if we look at the world at large, we quickly realize that simply having access to clean water, a house, food, cars, makes us very wealthy compared to those around us in the world. Around a billion people in the world live on less than a dollar a day. Much, much less than what we do here in America. Most of you spend a dollar a day on a Coke or on a bag of chips or on a coffee many people in the world today they live off one dollar or less than a dollar for three meals a day or whatever they can eat every day and whatever they can spend on their family and so here in America teenagers we need to be thankful for our country we need to be thankful that we've been blessed and so wealth can make it difficult sometimes for us to live out our faith and it can create obstacles uh, for us not to be generous to others and not always to show the love of Christ. Teenagers, I encourage you, even as you're young, uh, have a giving heart. Uh, sometimes if, you're, uh, if you've are if you got ice cream and, and you see a neighbor doesn't, or a friend, or maybe somebody, uh, get, get them some ice cream or a coffee. Share with others. Sharing is contagious. Uh, you know, uh, I've always heard sharing is caring. Uh, and, and of course, 
Uh, when it comes to food and when it comes to many things, sharing is caring. Uh, we always talk about colds or, or the flu or this time uh, with coronavirus. Sharing is not caring. We, we don't want people sharing those things. But when it, comes to, when it comes to finances, when it comes to food, when it comes to, to teaching others, sharing is caring. And it's showing that you care for people. And so we need to make sure that we're helping others and we're showing the love of God. James questions, what good is that kind of faith if we're not sharing and we're not showing the love of Christ? And we know that that's not good faith at all. In, in complete contrast, real faith shows love. We show compassion regardless of whether the cost or whether it's inconvenient or whether it's not. If you remember the story uh, in Luke chapter 10 of the Good Samaritan, it wasn't really convenient for the Good Samaritan to help, but yet he did. And so should we as Christians. We need to make sure sometimes when it's not convenient that we help others. Um, James chapter 2, we're going to look at verses 18 through 26 at this time. The Bible says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seeth thou how faith wrought his work with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Man, wouldn't you love to be called the friend of God? Teenager, the friend of God. What, what a great, I would love to be called the friend of God. I know I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. I'm thankful for that. But Abraham here was called the friend of God. Verse 24, Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And so teenagers, let's make sure that our faith in Jesus Christ, let's make sure that we show the world our faith through love. Uh, we can show our faith in many ways, but let's show it in our obedience. Let's show it in, in our um, actions to, toward others. Our next point is faith, uh, faith obeys. And so along with compassion, we need to demonstrate obedience. And so we can show our faith as obedience. James challenge, challenges those who are not demonstrating their faith. He challenges them. He calls them to demonstrate only their faith, which we know is impossible. However, James can demonstrate by his faith, or excuse me, James can demonstrate his faith by his works. You know, teenagers, we can demonstrate some of our faith by our works. There are many ways. We can demonstrate our faith through our obedience to God. Um, and and our obedience to our parents and authority. Uh, faith can be shown in a number of ways. We can, we can demonstrate our faith by reading God's Word. We can demonstrate faith by going to church. Many different things we can demonstrate faith from. And Christ explicitly stated that those who love Him will keep His Word in John 14, verses 23 and 24. So faith isn't just accepting Christ's words. It's believing and doing. Again, I'm not talking about just being saved Salvation does not have to do with works. I mentioned that earlier for those maybe that, that tuned in a little later. But salvation in Ephesians 2, 8, 9 is not by works. And it's by faith. But as we're talking about living out our faith, James calls his readers to do more than just confess uh, their belief in God. He instructs them to live out their faith with courage as Abraham and as Rahab did. As a matter of fact, in Genesis chapter 22, Abraham's faith. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, Abraham was a pillar, a pillar uh, of Judaism and the founder of the nation of Israel. Abraham is revered and respected figure uh, in, in, in the world and in, specifically in, in Christianity. And we're thankful for Abraham. We're thankful for the faith that he had. And uh, James hones in on the most difficult event in Abraham's life to illustrate the necessity of courageous faith and obedience. 
the sacrifice of his only son Isaac found in Genesis chapter 22. God had promised Abraham uh, that he would turn him and his descendants into a mighty nation. But there was one catch. Abraham was old and he had no children. However, Abraham chose to believe God even after God later commanded him to sacrifice that promised long-awaited son, Isaac. Abraham may have anguished and I'm sure internal he had internal debates but yet Abraham by faith he obeyed God he trusted God and of course he surely agonized over this prospect of killing his own child however yet he trusted God and obeyed believing that God would keep his promise even if he had to bring Isaac back from the dead he knew that God would provide and that God would keep his promises and of course that's why he's, Abraham is listed in the faith promise in the Bible, in Hebrews. He trusted God's character enough to take the greatest risk of his life. When nothing else made sense, he passed the test of faith, and God fulfilled his promise because of Abraham and Abraham's obedience. God wants to do a lot in our lives, teenagers. But it takes us obeying God in the small things. As we obey God in the small things, reading the Bible every day, small things. Being faithful to church, small things. As we obey God in the small things, God blesses us and He magnifies those things. And He blesses us in large things. And so, step by step, little by little, God will bless us. And so, uh, here we see James states that this obedience justified Abraham. What does James mean by that claim? He doesn't mean that that obedience saved Abraham. But what he means is it was a manifestation of his faith in, as Romans 4, 1 through 3. Abraham's actions confirmed not the amount of his faith, but the object of his faith. The object of his faith as found in Romans was God. And so praise the Lord, Abraham's faith in God. Abraham believed God's promises, and God kept him even in extreme circumstances. Rahab's faith. Let's talk about Rahab's faith. Joshua chapters 2 uh, and also in jo Joshua's chapter 6. While Abraham was widely recognized and highly regarded by Jewish believers, Rahab was not. She was not a Jew nor a patriarch. She was not even reputable. But like Abraham, she acted on her faith in God in the face of uncertainty. And God blessed her. How did, how did Rahab demonstrate her faith in God? She hid the spies and helped them escape, even risking her own life and the life of her family. And so because of her faith, she also is in the faith chapter in the Bible. Rahab has heard the story, she had heard the stories of God's working on behalf of Israel. She knew that God part of the Red Sea gave Israel victory over the Ammon. Uh, Amorites and had promised the land to them. As an outsider, she had to make a choice about this new God in, in an environment that didn't, that didn't acknowledge God. Let alone, they didn't worship or obey God. But Rahab's choice to believe God was true and powerful and could take care of her not only saved her, but as I mentioned, it saved her family. God used her in a mighty way that day. And again, we're so thankful for Rahab and the faith she had. Let me let, tell you some, uh, let's look at some notable differences and similarities between uh, Abraham and Rahab. Abraham was wealthy. Rahab sold herself into slavery so that she could, uh, basically sold herself so that she could uh, survive. Uh, Abraham was a Jew. Rahab was a pagan foreigner. Uh, Abraham received a direct promise from God. Rahab observed the works of God. And so both Abraham and Rahab, some similarities they had was both Abraham and Rahab had to choose to believe God, who he was, and that he was who he said he was. Both had a lot to risk. Abraham risked losing his beloved child, and his promised heir, Rahab, risked mockery, rejection, and death of her and possibly even her family. 
As evidence in the lives of Rahab and Abraham, God looks for people who are willing to live out their faith no matter what. God rewards the faith of both of these, and he rewards the faith of us today, teenager. He spared Isaac's life and created a large nation from his lineage. He preserved Rahab and her family and brought her among his chosen people into the lineage of Jesus Christ. That's found in Matthew 1, 5 in the lineage of Christ. So Abraham and Rahab were not counted righteous because of their actions. They were counted righteous because of their faith. And their faith manifested itself in and through their actions. Belief is tied to action. Faith will demonstrate through uh, demonstrated through good works. So what should our faith look like, teenager? According to James, faith looks like compassion for those in need and courageous obedience to Jesus Christ. Here are, some evident, uh, here are some evaluation questions, teenagers, that we can think about to help us examine our heart and apply truths. How do we view those in need? Are we impatient or harsh? Do we try to meet the needs of others? Or are we simply interested in our own selfish, sinful desires? Are we willing to obey God even when maybe the situation doesn't always seem popular to obey God what's holding us back fear, pride maybe a misunderstanding of the gospel maybe a misunderstanding of our parents uh, or our teachers sometimes we can just ask uh, what steps can we take now to obey God well teenager as we close this week I would just encourage us let's look into the mirror of God's word and let's ask God to help us have loving faith, compassionate faith, obe uh, obeying, uh, obedience. And let's have faith that when others look at us, we have a mirror that reflects not us, but it's reflecting up to heaven. So that when others look at us, they don't see us, they see our Heavenly Father. Teenagers, uh, Miss Lynn and I love you. We're praying for you. I uh, encourage you, keep praying for each other, praying for your classmates, keep praying for our uh, your parents and our church, our pastor, keep praying for our country. Look forward to teaching you next week. Next week we'll be talking about Faith Speaks. Uh, so we're going to continue in James and uh, talking about Faith Speaks. Uh, pray that you have a good week. Keep working hard in your studies there at home. And again, if there's anything Miss Lynn and I can pray uh, for you or for your family about, please uh, shoot me an email or text. Thank you and uh, have a good day.